Hey guys, it's your girl Blue. And before I start off with this video, I just wanna give a quick but really heartfelt thank you to everyone who conspired to give me such a great birthday yesterday. Yesterday was Friday, April 24th, and I thought I was gonna be bummed out because I couldn't have my big party because of the coronavirus and we're all sheltering at home and being responsible. But you guys, like, I'm still smiling right now. As you can see, I still have that after birthday glow. You guys sent me so many loving messages. I got surprise gifts at my doorstep. Um, my friends in South Africa and Amsterdam sent me really sweet voice notes and texts. Like it was just, I had no choice but to have a good birthday. You guys lifted me up in so much love and I wanna thank you for that because it could have gone left, you know what I mean? There's something about being on quarantine during your birthday that kind of makes you have to like be really introspective and grapple with where you're at in life. but. There was never a moment yesterday where I didn't feel loved and so many of you did your part. So before I get started, I just have to say that. Love you, love you, love you so much. Now, the topic of today's video. Um, this video is a follow-up to the last video. And I have to tell you guys, I had no idea what I was walking into when I agreed to make astrology videos. Um, that last video, as you can see, I was in bed in my house robe, or well, my caftan actually, because I love caftans, uh, I had I was propped up on pillows. I didn't have any makeup on, except for like some colored lip gloss. I, I was tired. That video took two hours to make because I wanted to make sure that I dedicated a, a decent amount of time to every one of the 12 zodiac signs. But like after I made that video, I went right to bed. That's the beauty of shooting a video in your bed. What I didn't know though when I made it was that it was gonna get such a huge response from you guys. I don't really have a huge platform and so I'm used to making content that's kind of intimate. Like people who know me, I make it for them but I don't really expect anybody else to see it. This video by itself, just in the last week alone, has gotten more views than all of my other videos from this year combined. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret about how YouTube works if you guys don't have YouTube or create videos for social media. A lot of times when you see a video, you'll see the page views, the public can see the page views. But on the back end, what we see is the duration, right? And most videos, people will watch them for like four or five minutes and then click off. These videos had 12 segments for each of the signs and each segment was about five to seven minutes long. So I thought, the duration for most, the average duration for most of these videos was gonna be about five to seven minutes long. I thought people were gonna watch their part and leave. Much to my amazement, the average duration for that last video I did, and if you haven't seen it, I'll make sure to put it in the description box. Um, the video is called uh, Spicy Astrology, The Good, The Bad, and The Petty. The average view duration for that video was 45 minutes. That means most of you watched the entire thing that's unheard of, okay? Anybody who creates content knows that social media, you guys have a very short attention span, and the fact that so many of you just sat there and let me ramble for a full hour and some change and watch the whole thing, I'm mind blown by that. I'm completely mind blown by that. But it was also good to see that this content that I'm doing speaks to you guys because a lot of people do astrology. Let's be honest, astrology is very popular, but the way that I do it, is very decidedly my way of doing it. And I wasn't sure um, how you guys were gonna take it. I, I try to be humorous, I try to have fun, but I'm also really blunt. And I thought people were gonna get their feelings hurt. You know what I mean? Like I went in on people like uh, Libra, Capricorn, uh, Aquarius. Like I, I did not pull any punches, but you guys are have a, a stronger palette than I thought. So now that I know there's a space for this, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of this. Now. That's my disclaimer. I said my thank yous. I explained why I'm doing this video. The topic of today's video is gonna be, hold on, let me make sure the lighting. One thing I'm gonna try to do is make sure that I fix the lighting on my videos because my apartment has a lot of natural light, which is great in real life, but on camera, it sometimes looks like I'm sitting on the sun, so I hope there's not too much of a glare. Also, as you can tell, I look a little bit different. That's because I'm on vacation for the next week, so I took out my braids and I got some rest. I even put on some makeup. Like, y'all, I feel amazing. I'm glowing so much. Anyways, the topic of today's video is going to be um, beyond your sun sign, why you need to get your natal chart done. Now, I don't know how many times I've told people, 
please, please, please get your natal chart done. Do not just look up your sun sign. Look up your moon sign and your rising sign and your Venus sign and your Mars sign. I even wrote it in the description of the last video. And guess what? A lot of y'all didn't listen to me. And the reason that is, is I think a lot of folks don't understand what a natal chart is or they don't understand the value of a natal chart. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I think that's by design. Um, a lot of astrologers, no shade, no tea, a lot of mystics, a lot of gurus, what they'll do is they'll make this topic so esoteric and so abstract that you need them. And they, they make you dependent so that you can pay them a lot of money to tell you things that you could probably just like figure out during a regular conversation. So I don't wanna have that kind of content. I wanna make this stuff relatable for you. So this video is gonna be all about why your sun sign simply is not enough. And because I'm a writer by trade, I know that storytelling is how you get people to understand things, right? I love analogies. A good analogy can get a point across a lot more than a very eloquent speech. So what I'm gonna do today is it's gonna be a very unorthodox uh, approach about teaching you about natal signs. I'm not going to pull out a, a, a chart and talk about the sun and the moon and the stars. Instead, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. And by the time I finish telling you this story, I have the feeling that you're gonna not only wanna get your chart done, but you're gonna look at astrology of very, very differently. Even if you're someone who thinks you know about astrology, the way that I approach these things, again, is very me. I think this is gonna compel you to take a second look um, at all the components of your chart. All right, you guys ready? As always, I promise this is gonna be fun. My attention span is a little bit low, so if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, and if you're watching this on Instagram or Facebook, just know I'm only going to be posting about 10, 15 minutes of the actual video, but you have to go to my YouTube to watch the whole thing. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for story time? Let's go. Hey, boys and girls, I am here to tell you a story about a town called Zodiac. Imagine a beautiful town called Zodiac. Zodiac is an interesting place and it is cut up into four boroughs. For those of you who are from New York, you know what a borough is. You got the Bronx, you got, you got Harlem, you got Brooklyn, you got Queens. Zodiac has four boroughs and each of those boroughs is very, very distinct in this town. First, you have the Earth Borough, right? Now, the Earth Borough is where the mayor lives. It's a gated community. It's where all the rich, dependable, uh, old money, wealthy people live, right? They don't eat their sandwiches with Dijon mustard. They eat it with Grey Poupon, right? And so in the Earth Borough, there are three different um, streets. You guys know what all the Earth signs are. There, there's Taurus, there's, there's Capricorn, there, there's Virgo. Then you have the air borough. The air borough is where all the free thinkers live. It's where all the really smart, uh, creative, slightly flaky folks live. It's like Silicon Valley um, in San Francisco. And th then you have the air signs and they all live in the, the air borough. Third, you have the water borough. The water borough, God love them. Uh, social workers live there. The healers live there. The charlatans, the con men who like to prey on emotions also live there. I'm just going to say. So the water borough is a very emotional place, salt of the earth, a little bit more blue collar, focused on healing and love and light and nurturing and loving you and all that great stuff, right? Unless they don't like you, then they will probably rob you. There's a lot of pickpockets who live in, in the water borough. And last but not least, we have the fire borough. The fire borough is turned up. That's where all the hustlers live. That's where all the rebel rousers live. Folks who like to party, they live there. But they're also kind of brilliant. Like, don't think just because they're a little bit reckless that they're not smart. Um, if I had to pick somebody, a Jay-Z would live in the fire borough, okay? So think about this. The town of Zodiac... And in the town of Zodiac are the four boroughs. And those four boroughs, for those of you who are not good at analogies, are the four elements. Air, water, earth, and fire. Now, every single one of these boroughs has, th has three streets. And those three streets are your signs, right? I'm going to read out this list for you real quick. I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget. On the earth borough is Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. On the air borough is Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Fire borough is Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And the water borough is Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. 
So far, I hope you're still with me because we're just getting started. So in these four boroughs, right, this town of Zodiac is a very fun town. It's very community-minded. And because it's so community-minded, every month the town throws a block party. And whoever's in charge of throwing that block party, the whole town kind of feels like them. So right now, we're in tourist season. It's the end of April going into May. So for the next four weeks, the tourist street in the Earth Borough is going to be throwing the, the community block party. So everything's going to feel a little touring in, right? You people are going to be focused about their home and their relationships and the way that they relate to each other. And they're going to care about taking naps and, 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 and how they create their, their spaces. You know what I mean? They're going to be concerned about how they come off. That's very touring in energy. So even though every single borough has its own distinct vibe and every single street on the borough, i.e. the signs, has its own distinct vibe, this is the block party on the tourist street right now next month towards the end of may going into june gemini's are going to be throwing the block party and everything's going to feel a little gemini it's going to be a little spicy people are going to be worried about adventure and they're pub they're going to probably be worried about their social media presence because gemini is all about communication and 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 putting on a presence right everything's going to feel real gemini from the end of may until like probably most of june because they're throwing the block the block party and then, of course, towards the end of June, going into July, the Cancers are going to be throwing the block party. And suddenly, things are going to get real sensitive, right? People are going to be really, really focused about feelings. You're going to be really have to worry about, like, how you relate to folks. Every single time a different street in this town throws a block party, everybody in the town kind of gets influenced by that street. I hope I'm still with you guys. We got so far four boroughs. And every borough has three streets. And every street gets a month where they get to throw a block party and take over the town. So far, so good, right? Now, when you tell me your sun sign, what you're doing to me as an astrologer is you're telling me what street you live on. So if you tell me that you're a Virgo, I'm like, oh, okay, let's say I'm your I'm your Amazon Prime delivery person, right? I'm Astrologers are messengers. And, and like a, a messenger, we have a package to deliver to you, right? And so if I wanted to deliver a package to you and you tell me that you're a Virgo, I'm going to be like, all right, set my GPS. I'm going to go to the Earth Borough and I'm going to go to Virgo Street. Now, here's the problem, guys. This is the part where I explain to you why I get so annoyed when people think their sun sign is all I need to help them out. If you tell me you live on the Earth Borough on Virgo Street and I have a package to deliver to you, what would happen if you were buying a package and you were getting it delivered by Amazon and all you put was a street? That's it. You just put Virgo Street. How would I know where you live? I know what street you're on, and if I'm feeling a little bit petty, I might leave your the box on the middle of the street and hope that one of your neighbors recognizes your name and brings it to your house, but I don't actually know where you live. I know the general vicinity of where you live. I know what street you're on. I know what borough you're in, but I don't know which house is yours. And that's why I need your street address. And this is where things get fun. On every street in Zodiac Town, there are 12 houses and every house has a name. There's an Aries house, there's a Gemini house, there's a, a Capricorn house. So if you tell me as your astrologer, as your, your, your person who's helping you out, like understand yourself through astrology, and you tell me that you live on Virgo Street, I need to know the exact house, and that house is your rising sign. Your rising sign is the rest of your address. So the same way when you say, I live on, let's say, Pine Street, you tell me you live on Pine Street is your sun sign. You tell me you live on 4345 Pine Street is your rising sign. Does that make sense? So there's the House of Gemini. I'm going to speak in houses because I love Paris is Burning. And for those of you who haven't seen Paris is Burning, please watch that movie. It's like legendary. So there's the House of Gemini on Virgo Street. There's the House of Aries on Virgo Street. There's the House of Pisces on Virgo Street. So when you tell an astrologer um, what your rising sign is, you're not only telling them what borough you live in and what street you live on, you're now telling them exactly which house you live in. Does that make sense? There's a lot of people who don't understand rising signs who I think are going to watch this video and be like, oh, that's why. So when I say your rising sign is equally as important as your sun sign, that's because your rising sign gives me the rest of your address. 4543 Pine Street, the 4543 is arguably just as important as Pine Street. 
So your rising sign is arguably just as important as your sun sign. Now, here's the thing about the fun thing about rising signs that I love so much. Every single uh, rising sign the house of Gemini, the house of, of Capricorn, the house of Aquarius. All those rising signs are like little embassies for the other streets in the other boroughs. So the same way of if you were to go to Thailand as an American citizen and something happened to you, what would you do if you got in into some kind of issue with the law? You'd be like, yo, take me to the American embassy, right? Because you know that even though you're in Asia, the American embassy is supposed to be a little bit of America in the midst of an Asian nation, right? So in that same way, your rising sign is a little bit of that actual sign in the midst of your sun sign. So as a Gemini rising, when I meet an actual Gemini, when I meet someone who lives on Gemini Street because their sun sign is Gemini, I kind of feel a kinship to them because I'm like, oh my God, you live on Gemini Street? I live in the Gemini Embassy on Taurus Street. Get it? Taurus Street is, Taurus is my, is my sun sign, but I live in the Gemini Embassy on Taurus Street which means that even though I'm a Taurus, I have a lot of co in common with Geminis because I represent Geminis on my Taurus street. I hope I haven't lost you guys by now because this analogy is about to get even more complicated. So one more time for the folks in the back who were a little bit slow, we live in the town of Zodiac. The town of Zodiac is cut up in four boroughs. Every borough has its own kind of energy. In every borough, there are three streets, three signs for every element, right? And on those streets are 12 houses. Every house is an embassy for a bigger street. So every, every single street has a Taurus house. Every single street has a Cancer house. Every single street has a Capricorn house. Now this is why things are, are so important to have your rising sign. This is why I actually think that when people tell me their rising sign, it means more to them than their sun sign. Because the way embassies work, embassies are homogenous. They're supposed to represent, be a small part of a whole, right? So I'm a Taurus with a Gemini rising. So I'm a Taurus who lives in the Gemini house. My best friend is an Aries. Aries and Taurus are supposed to have nothing in common and are supposed to have like a lot of conflict, right? But check this, my best friend's rising sign is Gemini. So I live in the Gemini house, the house of Gemini on Taurus Street, and he lives in the house of Gemini on Aries Street. So even though we have two signs that are supposed to be drastically different, the reason why we've been best friends for over 20 years is because we are both living in Gemini embassies on our prospective streets. Does that make sense? The reason why I want you guys to think of it this way is when you meet someone who's not your sun sign, but is your rising sign, your rising sign is also your tribe. A lot of times people are like, Blue, why are you always shouting out Gemini? You're a Taurus. Yeah, I'm a Taurus. That's the neighborhood I live in, but I live in the house of Gemini, so I have to rep them too. All right, hopefully you guys got that. If you haven't, you might want to pause the video and play it back. I'm trying my best to explain this to you as clearly and as quickly as possible. I don't want this video to drag on. Now, now I'm, I'm going back to using the Amazon Prime Delivery Guy uh, analogy, right? So I'm your delivery guy, and as your astrologer, I have a message to give you. You told me what borough you live on, you told me what street you live on, and now I finally know what house you live on. If I have a small package, i.e. a casual message, Knowing what house you live on is enough. I can leave it on your doorstep, right? But what if I have something bigger? What if I have a deeper message that I need to send to you? What if I need to tell you something um, that needs to go in your living room, right? What if I have a, like a 50 inch television set that I need to hang on your living room wall? That is your moon sign. Or what if I have something that I need to, a big refrigerator that I need to put in your kitchen, right? That's your Venus sign. Or what if I have something that I need to put in your bedroom? In everybody's house, there are different rooms. And every single room represents a facet of you as a human being. So we're on Taurus Street. I'm gonna use me as an example because I know me, right? We're on Taurus Street and we're at the, Gem the house of Gemini, the house that's supposed to be the Gemini embassy on Taurus Street. That's my rising sign. When you walk into my living room, my house, the first thing you see is my living room. My living room is my moon sign. For those who do not know what a moon sign is, your moon sign is your internal dialogue. It's the way that you talk to yourself. It's the way that you relate to yourself. When you're laying in bed late at night, 
processing your day and trying to figure out how to maneuver things, that's your moon sign. And the reason why I call that your living room, because when you're trying to have a heart to heart with somebody, you usually have them come over your house and you sit on the living room couch and you guys hash things out, right? So your living room, the place where you unpack things, the place where you figure stuff out, the place where you lie around, the way that you think when you're lying around by yourself watching TV, that's your moon sign. So my moon sign is Virgo which means my living room is very, very neat, right? When I'm alone by myself, I'm making up lists, just like a Virgo. I'm, I'm going over things and making a list and checking them twice. I'm being very methodical because my internal dialogue, i.e. my moon sign, is a Virgo. Now, a long time ago, someone told me you should date your, Virgo, your, date your moon sign at least once because your internal dialogue is the way that you think when nobody's around. And if you date somebody who has your moon sign, you get to see what your internal dialogue looks like when it's manifested as an actual person. I've tried this out. It was infuriating. I dated a Virgo and everything about me that annoyed me, I literally watched playing out on my partner and I was like, ooh, I got to fix that. Um, so there's a lot of value in dating your moon. Some people say they marry their moon. I, I don't think I want to marry my moon. I'm going to be honest. I love Virgos because I have to. I think like y'all, but um, no, nah, that's not going to happen. So your moon sign is your internal light dialogue. It's the living room in the house. So as your, your, your delivery person, if I have something to deliver to your, to your living room, I'm going to know that I'm walking into a Virgo living room. I'm in Taurus Street on the Gemini house, but I'm in a Virgo living room. The next room that I need you to know about is your kitchen slash dining room area, and that is your Venus sign. Your Venus sign is the way that you love. Now, some of you might be saying, Blue, love? Love should be in the bedroom. No, no, no. There's a sign for that. We'll get to that later. Your Venus sign is about the way that you romantically love. It's about the way that you court and like to be courted. It's the way that you date and relate to someone that you are emotionally getting to know better. So my Venus sign is, is uh, Gemini, right? So a Gemini Venus uh, will have probably mad uh, magnets on the refrigerator from all the places that I've traveled because Geminis love adventure when they're falling in love. Um, I'll probably have uh, my music blaring because Geminis love to be stimulated. So I'll probably have like a big speaker in my kitchen that is b b um, bursting out with like lots of great music. Um, I'll probably have my laptop in my kitchen with a bunch of tabs open for all the places and all the adventures that I want to take my beloved on with me. If you guys hear that, by the way, that's my fridge. I'm in the kitchen. So you guys can hear the fridge. Um, so yeah, funny enough, my fridge is talking while I'm talking about the kitchen. Hilarious. Um, but anyways, your Venus sign is the kitchen slash dining room area. When you are trying to date somebody, what do we do? We take them out to dinner because we want to break bread with people, right? So the way that you feed romance, the way that you feed love, the way that you um, like uh, worship Venus, the goddess of love and pleasure, is the kitchen of that house, right? And so if someone, let's just say, has a Taurus in Venus. Their Venus is in Taurus. That means when they love, they are opulent. They like to spoil their partners. Um, they like to have a lot of sex. They like to be sensual. If someone has, let's say, a Virgo Venus, that means when they are falling in love, they're very strategic and they have a checklist of what makes a perfect partner because Virgos are natural perfectionists, right? And they have this checklist and when they meet somebody, they're like, mm, okay, this, that, and the other. A Virgo Venus kitchen probably has all the spices with labels on them and alphabetized, right? Um, if you have a Gemini, I already said Gemini. If you have like, let's say a Sagittarius kitchen, uh, it's probably a bunch of takeout menus, I'm going to be honest. Sagittarius's are a little bit all over the place when it comes to love. So if you, even if you have somebody with a stable sign, let's say someone is living in the house of Capricorn, which is or the house of, uh, let me use something else because I think I already used Capricorn. Let's say somebody's living in the house of Libra, which is supposed to be, you know, lovely and whatever. But when you see them in relationships, they're kind of like reckless and talking crazy. You're like, wait, you're a Libra. You're supposed to be charismatic and, and, and this like person who's really sensual and sweet. But when you are in love, you talk reckless to your partners. And then you find out their Venus sign is in Sagittarius. And you're like, oh, got it. That makes sense. Which brings me to a great point, guys. The reason why I'm using this analogy is because when I made that last video, 95% of you were blown away by how accurate that video was about your sun sign. But for that 5% who were confused and they were like, Blue, I saw the Libra video, don't sound like me. Literally 100 times out of 100, when someone says their sun sign breakdown doesn't sound like them, it's because their rising sign or something else in their chart deviates from their sun sign. So perfect example, 
My homegirl, Miriam, I love her. She's a Capricorn. She lives on Capricorn Street. But when I met her and she told me she was a Capricorn, I was like, you sure about that? I was not, I did not get Capricorn from her. Until I said to her, have you done your natal chart? And lucky for me, she had. And I found out that her rising sign was Aries. And that made all the sense in the world. Capricorn Street is in the earth borough in a gated community, really, really chill, really, really bougie. But Miriam lives in the Aries house on Capricorn Street. She has a frat house, okay? So they're partying and twerking and whatnot on a street where everybody else is like quiet and chilling and trying to be bougie. So suddenly I was like, oh, okay, you're a Capricorn, but your rising sign is an Aries. Got it, that makes sense. I had another friend who, um, I think their their sun sign was Pisces. Pisces is supposed to be very loving and, and, and nurturing and worried about helping people. But this friend was a troublemaker and was out here running these streets. And I was like, are you sure you're a Pisces? Looked at their chart and sure enough, their rising sign was Sagittarius as well. Their, um, their moon sign, the living room was Leo. So their living room is probably full of pictures of themselves in a mirror so they can see themselves even better. And their Mars sign, we're gonna get to the Mars sign by the way, was Aries and Mars is how you, how you get angry. And, and I was like, if your Mars sign is Aries, if you get mad on Pisces street, you're gonna burn up all these houses. So knowing what your chart is is really important because it sometimes your chart will reinforce what your sun sign is. Like I have a, a home girl, um, her name is Russ. I love you, Russ. What's up? Russ is a Libra like five times over. She lives on Libra Street in the Libra house with a Libra living room and a Libra kitchen and a Libra bathroom. So her chart is almost redundant. So she almost doesn't need to have her chart done. But other times, like me, who's a Taurus, but I got so much Gemini, why am I so spicy? Because Tauruses are supposed to be a lot more tame than I am. When you're right sign or something else in your chart contradicts your sun sign, suddenly your sun sign becomes like a code that, that cracks everything, right? So we already talked about the liver room being your, your moon sign, and that's your internal dialogue. Venus is your um, kitchen and dining room area where you court. And the third room that I want to talk about, because I don't want this video to be too long. The last video was way too long. I'm still tired from that. The third room I want to talk about is your Mars, right? Your Mars is your bedroom. Your Mars sign is how you get mad and how you fuck. I need you to sit with that, okay? Anger and sex are related when it comes to the Zodiac. So the way that you have sex and the way that you get pissed off are the same thing. So your Mars sign tells you how you get turned on and also how you pop off. My Mars sign is Leo. And I think in my last video, I said, yo, Leos are crazy, but they're my kind of crazy. That's because my Mars sign is Leo. When I get mad, I suddenly turn into a Leo, right? So a Leo, when a Leo gets mad, their first re reaction is, uh, do you know who the hell you're talking to? I'm popping. Don't, don't talk to me crazy. That's all Leo vibes, okay? Leos turn into like annoyed royalty when they get mad. I get very, very bougie and indignant when I'm upset. That's all the Leo in me. Tauruses don't get mad like that. When a Taurus gets mad, they charge at you, right? But I get mad like a Leo. So for a review, we live in the town of Zodiac. The town of Zodiac has four boroughs. Every borough has three streets and every street has 12 houses. And in those houses are different rooms that tell you different facets of yourself. So if you just wanna go to the block party, then it is, all I need to know is what street you live on, right? Because a block party is an, is an open event. It's a casual thing. So those of you who are rock around just repping your sun sign, all you're doing is going to a block party. But if you want me to deliver a poignant message, like a really poignant message, I need to know what house you live in, which is your rising sign. And if you want that message to be very specific about a facet of your, your psyche, then I need to be let into your house and know which room to go in. So when I do videos, a lot of you have been making some really amazing suggestions about videos that you want me to make. When I do a, vi a video about love, yeah, you can just use your sun sign for that video, but I'm gonna implore you to look at your rising sign and also your Venus sign, because your Venus sign is actually the very specific room that you love in. If I do a video about sex, you better believe I'm gonna be talking about your Mars sign. If I do a video about, let's say, um, empowering your internal dialogue and rewiring the way that you perceive yourself and the world around you, then I might wanna talk about your moon sign. But most of the time, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the sign that matters to me the most is your rising sign. I don't just wanna know what street you live on, I wanna know your exact address. And that's why you need to get your natal chart done. Um, I hope this video is helpful. Is there anything else that I forgot? Let me see, I made notes. No, I think I covered everything.
Yep, I think I covered everything. So if you watch this video and you plan to watch other videos that I'm making, I'm going to employ you, please get your natal chart components and make sure that you use those as a guide for future content that I'm gonna be making. And for those of you who are like, hey Blue, cause a lot of you have hit me up, hey Blue, can you do my chart? No. I'm not gonna do your chart and I'm gonna tell you why I'm not gonna do your chart. The whole point of anything that I ever do is to either advance a conversation or elevate it. There's nothing elevating about me doing something that you could quickly do for yourself on Google. A trained monkey could pull up your coordinates, right? There are so many websites, Astro, Cafe Astrology, so many websites where all you need is your date of birth, your time of birth, and your location of birth, and you put in those coordinates and like an algorithm will literally just pull up your chart for you. So that's not something that you guys need me for and I would be a charlatan if I made you feel like you needed me just to get your chart. I'm not gonna create services for you guys for things that you can do for yourself. In fact, when it comes to anything in general, because now I'm about to go on a soapbox for a quick second, please bear with me. When it comes to anything about self-mastery, there are always three components. The first component is the data, right? You need to get an aggregate of the data. That's where you get the components of your chart in, in this example. The second point is translation. You take that data and then you take a key code to translate what it means. These videos that I'm making are a translation. I'm I, once you know your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, your Pluto and everything else, you come to me to give you a very fun and quick translation on social media. The third component though, after data and translation is mastery and analysis. A masterful analysis, that is a service. If you guys want me to create a service for you that I'll actually charge for, that's what where the money comes in. If you guys want a reading from me, it's not gonna be for data. It's not gonna be for basic interpretation and translation. I can gift you guys with that. The only thing that I'm gonna do for you as a service is masterful analysis, right? There's a, a famous story that I love, and I'm gonna probably get this story a little bit wrong because I'm paraphrasing. Got it. I forgot to look it up before I made this video. But there's a story about Pablo Picasso and how he was sitting at a cafe, and one day um, he was just doodling, drinking his latte, and he grabbed a napkin and a pen and just started doodling a really cute picture. A lady at the cafe recognized him, and she said to him, oh, you're Picasso, I love your work. And he said, thank you. And she was like, that picture is magnificent. You drew it so quickly. Um, can I buy it from you? And he was like, sure. She was like, how much? And he was like, $10,000. And she was like, excuse me, I just watched you. It took you five minutes to draw that picture. Why in the hell would I pay you $10,000 for five minutes of work? And he looked at her and said, lady, it took me 30 years to learn how to draw that picture in just five minutes. You're not paying me for the five minutes, you're paying me for the 30 years. So that's how I feel, right? Like it took me 20 and some change years to get to the point where I can make it look easy and have these conversational fun um, dialogues with you guys about astrology and mysticism and tarot. I'm gonna do tarot videos soon, so stay, stay tuned for that. It took me 20 years, right? So you guys are never gonna be paying me for the five minutes or the five hours that it takes for me to do an analysis for you. You're paying me for all the years that it took me to be an expert to do it to the degree that I'm doing it, okay? So for those of you who've been asking for readings, just know the readings are coming. Probably in June, I'll, I'll start providing that service after I get my bearings a little bit. But when I do readings, they're not gonna be about basic stuff like, like getting your chart done. They're gonna be about analysis. Hope I answered that question because I got that question a lot and I, I can't respond to all of you. And for those of you who have watched this entire thing, I hope now you understand why if you want the messages that I'm delivering and the messages that anybody who's into astrology is delivering, why I say you need a natal chart is we need your address. We need to know where you live, what house you live on, and what you want delivered to that house and what room. Okay? Uh, I hope this was informative. I hope my analogy wasn't too convoluted. To me, it makes all the sense in the world. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments section. Um, I love reading your comments. I don't read all of them because you guys DM me and message me a lot, but I do my best to at least an hour out of every day to take a quick look at the general consensus because it gives me a really great and organic sense of where you want this content to be heading. Um, it is a beautiful Saturday afternoon. I'm about to go grocery shopping. I'm gonna put on a mask first and some gloves. I'm about to go grocery shopping, so I'll check you guys later. I love you for watching. I love you for rocking with me. I love you for creating this space where it feels like my voice has a value. And the, before I do my next video, your homework, because I'm going to start giving you guys homework. Before I do my next video, your homework is to Google 
getting your chart done. And for those of you who don't know the time that you were born, call your mama and tell her to stop playing and find your birth certificate and tell you what time you were born because it's, it's kind of a game changer. And if you don't, you know, if you were adopted or your parents unfortunately have passed, you just don't have access to your, your information and all you have is your sun sign, that's okay. Like I said, the sun sign means you, you're still invited to the block party, right? You might not know exactly what house you're going to when the party's over, but you can still rock with us. But for those of you who do have the luxury to get your coordinates, stop playing and get it done. Okay? Until next time. Bye, guys.